Hello friends and uh, welcome to my channel. So today we will be talking about the ultrasound of the common flexor tendon. So in order to visualize the common flexor tendon in the longitudinal axis, we will be keeping our probe on the medial side of the elbow in a craniopotal direction. Now, once you are keeping the probe in uh, on the medial side in a craniopotal direction, what all are the structures you will be looking at? So to get yourself acquainted to that. So this bony projection which you are seeing, right? So this is the medial epicondyle, right? Now, what you are seeing here is the anterior band of the ulnar collateral ligament, which extends from the medial epicondyle and it goes up to the sublime tubercle of the um, ulna, right? And this bony, this rounded thing which you are seeing here, that is the trochlea, right? You can see it very well in this picture, right? So that is the trochlea. And this bony thing which you are seeing, that is the coronoid process of the ulna, and this one is the joint. Now, the common flexor tendon when we are uh, talking about is basically a tendinous origin of the five muscles from a bony thing. And that bony thing is your medial epicondyle. Now, what all are the uh, muscles which later on just fan out from this uh, tendon? So you have the pronator teres, right? And then if the FCR, that is the flexor carpi radialis. Then we have the palmaris longus. Then we have the flexor carpi ulnaris. And beneath that, you will be able to see the flexor digitorum superficialis. So this arrangement was from the radial side to the ulnar side. Right? So again, we will be just repeating it before we are just going into the demonstration. So common flexor tendon is a tendinous origin of these five muscles. What are the five muscles? Once you go from the lateral to the medial side, you have the pronator teres, then you have the flexor carpi radialis, then is the palmaris longus, then is the flexor carpi ulnaris, and beneath that, you're going to have your flexor digitorum superficialis. Now, beneath this, you will be able to see the anterior band of the ulnar collateral ligament, which also extends from the medial apicondyle and it goes up to the sublime tubercle of the ulna. So let's see the demonstration now. So now if you want to scan the common flexor tendon, again the patient is sitting across the table, shoulder is in forward flexion, elbow extended, forearm supinated and palm facing up. Now, here you can just palpate the medial epicondyle. This is the medial epicondyle, which is again a bumpy thing, which is present on the medial side. Fine. So how your common flexors, they will be uh, then becoming the muscle is, you have the tendinous portion, which will be getting attached on the medial epicondyle. And then you have the pronator teres. Then you have your FCR. Then is the palmaris longus. Then is your FCU. And beneath that, you have your flexor digitorum superficialis. So you can just palpate the medial epicondyle, right? Because we are just looking the common flexor tendon in the longitudinal axis. So you palpate the medial epicondyle, put your probe in the craniocaudal direction, right? And then... Once you have done that, then you will be just seeing the common flexor tendon, but a very small tendinous portion of it. So if you want to look for the good tendinous portion of the common flexor tendon, you need to rotate the caudal end of your probe. So this is the caudal end of the probe, which you need to rotate and you need to bring it. Yeah, I should say the caudal end should be brought when you are just in line with the index finger. So in that condition, you will be able to see the tendinous portion of the common flexor tendon very nicely. So this is what we are going to do now. So first, I'll just do one thing. See, once you're well-versed with all the scanning, you did not, but yes, when you are learning the ultrasound for the first time, it's always better you palpate so that you're having an idea how exactly the things are. So you can put one of your finger there over the medial epicondyle, and then you put your probe in the craniocaudal direction, right? just beneath your finger, right? So now you know that what the 
thing you are seeing is the medial epicondyle, right? So I'll just freeze it here. We will just quickly see the structures and then um, I'll just show you what exactly should be the end position of your probe. So what you are seeing here is the medial epicondyle. Now that is the downward slope of the medial epicondyle, which then later on becomes the trochlea. This is the trochleo ulnar joint, and that is the sublimus tubercle. Now in this position, you will be able to see the anterior band of the ulnar collateral ligament very, very nicely, which is just here, which you are seeing it like this, okay? And which is just going beyond the sublimus tubercle of the ulna. Now, what you are seeing here is the tendinous portion of the common flexor tendon. This is what I was telling you that when your probe is in line with the ulnar border, the tendinous portion is very small, right? But you need to look for a good amount of the tendinous portion in order to comment on the various aspects of the tendinopathy. So what you need to do now is you need to rotate the caudal end of your probe and you need to bring it to a point where exactly your probe is in line with the index finger of your palm. So again, before going into that, we are just repeating it. So that was the tendinous portion of the common flexor tendon. That is your medial epicondyle. This is the downward slope of the medial epicondyle. That is your trochlea. That is the sublimus tubercle of the ulna, right? This is your anterior band of the medial collateral ligament. Now let us see what exactly will be the difference we will bring in We'll just bring it out if we are just rotating the caudal end of our probe towards the index finger. So again, my finger is over the medial epicondyle. I'm putting my probe in a cranial caudal direction, right? And I'll be just now removing my finger, going a little more cranial, okay? And now I'll be just tilting, I should say, caudal end of my probe. So I've started tilting. Okay. So you see that now the tendinous portion which you are just seeing has started increasing. Okay. And at this moment, I'm able to see a good amount of the tendinous portion of the common flexor tendon. But at this moment, I should say I'm not able to see the ulnar collateral ligament, though I'm able to see some fibers of it, but not beautifully the way I was looking at when my caudal end was exactly perpendicular. So you can just align your probe and you can see a good amount of tendinous portion if the caudal end is just towards the index finger. So at this moment, it is more or less in line with that. And now I'm able to see the tendinous portion very nicely, okay? So if you can bring it a little more, you will be able to see much more amount of the tendinous portion. So that finishes your common flexor tendon in the longitudinal axis. And do join this channel. And thank you so much for watching.